Now coming to renal system, here you have the kidney. If you look at the functional unit of nephron, these fat cells go and deposit into that nephrons. Here that macrophage M1 and the fat cells go deposit. This is the normal glomerulus. This is the efferent arteriole. And what happens is the glomerulus increases in size as well as the efferent arteriole dilatation happens. This is normal podocytes. But in obesity, this podocytes get spaced out and the protein which is present inside will go into the interstitium. So, protein leakage also can happen which can affect your duct protein binding. Here you can see the dilated efferent arteriole and impaired autoregulation due to enlargement of the glomerulus and here you can see the podocytes gives way and the protein leakage into the interstitium and there is increased capillary wall tension and the capillary diameter when compared to normal it is increased. So, what are your anastric consideration in patient with obesity? From the brain side, there is going to be altered respiratory dive. There is going to be decreased drive for ventilation. With pulmonary, your respiratory compliance is reduced, your FRC is reduced, there is loss of recruitment maneuver, VQ mismatch can happen, increased work of breathing and increase intrinsic PEEP. Coming to gastrointestinal system, there is going to be fatty liver, even cirrhosis can happen and endocrine, you have insulin resistance, hyperglycemia and hyperlipidemia, musculoskeletal, increase work of movement, difficult mobilization and frailty, pharmacological, there is increased volume of distribution and increased elimination of life, hyperlipidemia is there and Coming to neck, there is going to be difficult back mass ventilation. Sometimes the intubation can be even more difficult and it is very difficult to do tracheostomy if there is a lot of neck fat and cardiovascular system. There is going to be left ventricle hypertrophy, both diastolic and systolic dysfunction, increased right ventricular mass as well as dysfunction, increasing circulatory blood volume and your blood pressure is going to be high with increased venous return. And coming to the renal system, supranormal glomerular filtration rate, chronic kidney disease can happen and there can be renal congestion. Coming to the hematological, chance of venous thromboembolism is there and most important thing is the vascular access can be really, really difficult. Dermatological, you can have pressure ulcers and increase sweating. To be on the disease side, there is a chance of hypertension, diabetes, MI, atherosclerosis, ischemic stroke, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So, what you are going to do in the pre-op assessment? First, coming to the physiological parameter. You look at your body mass index and fat distribution, whether it is centrally located or peripherally located or subcutaneous or visceral fat. You look at your waist circumference and neck circumference. Also another important thing is waist to hip ratio. Your upper airway, most of the time there will be upper airway obstruction and look for obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. And the lab test which you are going to do is electrocardiogram which is for your cardiac status, complete bed count, hemostasis, clotting time, bleeding time and other coagulation parameters, serum glucose, particularly HbA1c to know the diabetic status, lipid profile which will be grossly altered, kidney function, blood urea, nitrogen and creatinine and your liver function test. The additional test includes echocardiogram for a cardiac, CT scan or Chest radiograph of the thoracic cavity should be done because the respiratory system is the most important affected system of obesity. Spirometry and ABG to know the lung mechanics. Sleep study should be done in uh, class 3 obesity. Index of inflammation, serum uric acid and endocrine function, thyroid profile and other things should be done. Coming to top bank score which is normally followed in the preoperative period. 
here you ask for eight question snoring whether the patient feels tired or sleepy towards the day somebody observing you stop breathing when you are sleeping your blood pressure whether it is high body mass index greater than 35 age over 50 your neck circumference greater than 40 cm square and male gender if the answer is yes to 0 to 1 to 2 questions there is low risk of obstructive sleep apnea if the answer is yes to 3 to 5 questions you require a good pre anesthetic assessment particularly by a senior consultant if the answer is yes to more than 6 to 8 questions definitely you require referral for sleep studies and the patient should be optimized before coming for surgery coming to another way of looking at pre op assessment poor functional capacity abnormal ecg uncontrolled blood pressure the saturation is less than 94 your bicarb is greater than 28 previous deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism stop bank greater than 5 if none is there it can be suitable for day case surgery but if it is present you should consider work up like bed gases sleep study pre operative cpap echocardiogram cardio respiratory referral to optimize the patient and most important thing is you need an experienced anesthetic team to manage and the patient should be in i dependency unit in the post operative period now coming to various positioning in the intraoperative period particularly with obese position first is the supine position patient lying flat what are the hemodynamic changes which is going to happen when the patient is placed on the supine position here by lying supine your cardiac output your pulmonary blood flow and your blood pressure increases and with general anesthesia and muscle paralysis there is reduction of lung volume already you have to remember that the lung volume is already reduced by giving anesthesia and muscle paralysis you cause further reduction so to sum up your cardio respiratory system is going to be affected even more with general anesthesia another important thing is there is going to be significant alteration in mechanical property of the respiratory system mark reduction in lung volume view q mismatch and splinting effect of abdominal content can lead to relative hypoxia and there can be significant increase in oxygen consumption and pulmonary artery pressure all this can happen with supine position and there is a entity called obesity supine death syndrome where the patient cardiac and respiratory reserve is already limited and when the patient lies supine invariably a cardiac arrest will happen now coming to head down that is trendelenburg position here the cardio respiratory changes will be even affected and obese patient usually does not tolerate this position there is going to be auto transfusion of all the blood from the lower extremity into the cardiac and the respiratory part which obese patient may not tolerate also the diaphragm plus the weight of the chest will decrease the already reduced compliance and patient will have severe hypoxia this position usually in morbid obese patient is not possible coming to head up reverse trendelenburg position this is the ideal position for patient with obesity here the upper part is elevated to 30 to 45 degrees and this will help to provide adequate ventilation because your intra abdominal content is pushed down there is no abdominal pressure coming over the respiratory system and this patient usually a morbidly obese patient will tolerate reverse trendelenburg nicely your saturation can improve and coming to prone position prone is very very difficult with the obesity because the patient cannot take the entire abdomen and lie down flat the prone position can be difficult and can be dangerous and it should be avoided if possible 
प्रोन पोषण कैन बी वेल टॉलरेटेड बाय ओबीस पेशेंट एस लॉन्ग दी अपर चेस्ट एंड पेल्विस आर एडिक्वेटली सपोर्टेड सो योर अपडोमिनल मूवमेंट इज फ्री द अनलोडिंग ऑफ द अपडोमिनल विसरा सिग्निफिकेंटली रिड्यूस द प्रेशर ऑन द डायफ्रम फॉर वेरी लार्ज पेशेंट द थोरैक्स एंड पेल्विस हैव टू बी राइज यूजिंग लार्ज पेल्विक एंड चेस्ट सपोर्ट प्रोलॉन्ग सर्जरी इन द प्रोन पोषण कैन कॉज complication the arm has to be carefully supported to avoid brachial plexus injury coming to lateral decubitus portion this is usually done because the patient cannot be put into prone portion but here the abdominal flat is displaced off the abdomen so your abdominal pressure is reduced usually the patient tolerates this position very well coming to the lithotomy portion which is going to be really really difficult here in lithotomy position you have to go with general anesthesia with positive pressure ventilation the longer the patient is in lithotomy position there is greater chances of developing compartment syndrome this is because of heavier weight of the lower extremity and you have to use intermittent pneumatic compression to reduce this risk another important part with lithotomy is going to be your back ache or there is increased risk of glastic reflex and pulmonary aspiration to summarize the patient positioning usually you go with the slight head up reverse tendal and buck position enough padding should be placed under the head which is called the ramp position here adequate immobilization with wide books and loop fastener strapping arms and feet should be supported adequately protection of pressure areas all pressure area should be protected with adequate cotton padding prevention of neural injury coming to ramp position you have to keep a pillow or blanket underneath the patient head and i will explain the ramp position while doing intubation you have to go for a ear to sternal this ear and sternal should be in a same line and with regard to operating table it should be an high capacity operating table with adequate shoulder leg and foot support and there should be arm board and table extension should be there coming to drug pharmacokinetics the volume of distribution is going to be high because of increased fat mass increased lean body mass increased total body water increase blood volume or high cardiac output and organomegaly the protein binding is halted because of increased lipoprotein and halted alpha 1 acid glycoprotein and your drug metabolism is increased because of increased activity of cytochrome p450 and increase metabolism via glucuronidation and sulfation and excretion is also rapid because of increased renal blood flow increased glomerular filtration rate increased tubular secretion and reabsorption and not to forget the individual organ system which is affected by obesity which can alter your drug pharmacokinetics now coming to the induction agent anesthetic part propofol here you induce with regard to lean body weight and if you use an infusion you have to go with total body weight the systemic clearance and the volume of distribution at steady state correlates with total body weight it has an high affinity for excess fat and there is high hepatic extraction and conjugation related to total body weight coming to thiopentone you have to use the lean body weight there is increased volume of distribution increased blood volume and cardiac output and increased muscle mass means you have to give an increased absolute dose there is prolonged duration of action but cardiovascular depression might limit the dosage of thiopentone coming to midazolam here you have to give midazolam with total body weight there is increased volume of distribution prolonged sedation because larger initial doses needed to achieve adequate serum concentration here you have to be careful 
if patient is obese and hypoventilating and if you sedate the patient he might go for an stop breathing and he might have an hypoxic arrest coming to muscle relaxant here succinyl choline you have to go with lean body weight here the plasma choline esterase activity increases with total body weight so you have to go with lean body weight vecronium you have to go with ideal body weight the recovery may be delayed if given according to total body weight because of increased volume of distribution and impaired hepatic clearance procronium you have to go with ideal body weight it is faster onset and longer duration of action the pharmacokinetics and dynamics are not altered in obese patients so procronium will be one of the ideal drugs to use in obesity atracurium and cisatracurium here you have to go with total body weight absolute clearance volume of distribution and elimination of life do not change unchanged use per unit body weight without prolongation of recovery because of organ independent elimination so either rocronium or atracurium will be ideal to use in obesity coming to opioids fentanyl you go with total body weight there is increased volume of distribution and elimination of life with correlates with total body weight so fentanyl for maintenance use the ideal body weight increase volume of distribution and elimination of life which correlates with degree of obesity distributes as extensively in excess body mass as in lean tissue dose should account for total body mass remifentanyl you go with ideal body weight pharmacokinetics are very similar with obese and non obese patient with regard to inhalational agent desflurane has, has been suggested as a inhalation of choice because of low fat to blood solubility this is usually preferred in prolonged surgery the capacity of adipose tissue to hold sevoflurane is 2.8 times the capacity to hold desflurane although desflurane is ideal than sevoflurane but in clinical studies the advantage is hardly a few minute so they recommend both sevoflurane and desflurane in obesity patient and they facilitate rapid emergence with recovery of airway reflexes so ideal combination will be propofol as an induction agent atracurium as a muscle relaxant remifentanil as opioid and desflurane as an inhalational agent so what are the various common anesthetic drug where you use the lean body weight propofol for induction thiopentone fentanyl rocronium atracurium morphine paracetamol bupivacaine and lignocaine you use adjusted body weight for propofol when you use as infusion antibiotics low molecular weight heparin alfentanil neostigmine and sugmadex coming to the most important thing when you give general anesthesia when the patient lies supine here you can see the oral axis and you can see the laryngeal and pharyngeal axis not coming in line when patient lying in supine without any head support if you go for the ramp or the head elevation laryngoscopic position which is called the help position here you place the cotton pad under the head and here you can see the pharyngeal and the laryngeal axis almost approximating easily so your laryngoscopic view of glottis becomes easy where all you give general anesthesia and obesity when the body mass index is greater than 45 kg per meter squared primarily central or abdominal obesity that is visceral obesity major abdominal or thoracic surgery surgery lasting for more than 2 hours and when you need a head down or a lithotomy position these are the cases where general anesthesia cannot be avoided coming to regional anesthesia regional anesthesia is not easy in obese patient it is going to be difficulty in moving and positioning the patient due to large size and there is going to be obscured anatomic landmark so localization will be very difficult inability to identify the epidural or subarachnoid space 
increase frequency of vascular cannulation that is wet tap during epidural placement and you may require a ultrasonograph to identify proper anatomy and the conventional needle may be too short you might require a larger size needle and another important thing is there is increased chance of inadequate or failed block requiring conversion to general anesthesia and how you ventilate the patient in the perioperative period before surgery that is in the preoperative period your preoxygenation is very important either you go for deep breaths or tidal volume breathing for more than 2 minutes if possible give continuous positive airway pressure with the pressure of 8 to 10 cm of water for 2 to 5 minutes or pressure support with P for 2 to 5 minutes during surgery go with lung protective mechanical ventilation your diving pressure should be between 13 to 15 cm of water low tidal volume 6 to 8 ml per kilogram keep a higher peep 10 to 12 cm of water use recruitment maneuver after your endotracheal intubation FiO2 0.3 to 0.8 depending upon the oxygenation status and alter your respiratory rate to target normal capnia and after uh, surgery you always need some form of respiratory support go with supplementary oxygenation CPAP of 8 to 12 centimeter of water if possible continue non-invasive ventilation coming to post-operative care the instance of post-operative hypoxia pulmonary embolism nausea vomiting is higher in this group of patient you should pay special attention to minimize the risk of hypoxia hypoventilation and poor patient positioning good post-operative pain management is very very important oxygen should be always prescribed as required early mobilization should be encouraged coming to daycare surgery there is currently no absolute weight limit for patients to be anesthetized for daycare surgery but you have to assess in the preoperative period and see whether they are suitable or not so to conclude you should have all the materialistic thing which is required for obesity suitable bed trolley a very big operating table gel padding white strapping table extensions and arm board to fit the extra weight of the patient forearm cuff or a large bp cuff sometime in obese patient you have to put invasive monitoring because the cuff size may not be enough to measure the blood pressure ramp for the airway you should place enough pad behind the head to for the pharyngeal and laryngeal access to come into same line you should have difficult airway equipment and ventilator which provides peep and pressure ventilatory modes there should be long spinal regional and vascular needle ultrasound machine should be available because of the anatomical distortion and it is very difficult to see the anatomy itself and you should have depth of monitoring as well as neuromuscular monitoring enough staff to move the patients also consider pre-med antacid good analgesia good tight sugar control and dvt prophylaxis pre-oxygenate and intubate in the ramp position provision for continuous positive airway pressure should be there minimize induction to ventilation interval to avoid desaturation leading to hypoxia most of the obese patient go ahead with tracheal intubation avoid spontaneous ventilation use peep in fact higher peep use short acting agent like desflurane propofol short acting opioid remifentanil go for multimodal analgesia post operative nausea vomiting prophylaxis should be done ensure food neuromuscular blocker reversal and extubate and recover in the head up portion reverse tendal and buck portion thank you